In alhamdulillah, wa salam, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with the topic of the different types of sins that we need to be aware of in Islam. Uh, yesterday, we talked about sins uh, committed against other Muslims. And I really hope everyone took yesterday's lecture to heart because when you look on Facebook, you see so many Muslims harming other Muslims with their, you know, tongue by uh, saying things about them that are bad, insulting them, lying on them, slandering them in many cases, calling them the K word, the Kafir word, and all of that. We have to stop doing that, guys. And today we're going to continue by speaking about other sins that many of us engage in, and this is a big one. Men wearing silk and gold. How many of you see Muslim men dressed in silk garments and with gold rings and gold watches? This is a major sin. Also insulting the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also wearing wigs, toupees, and false hair. Let's start with the silk and gold. You know, every Muslim knows that it is forbidden it is forbidden in Islam for men to wear gold and for men to wear silk. Women can wear silk. Women can wear gold. There is nothing in Islam that forbids a woman from wearing any type of fabric or color or any of that. Even though you find many ignorant people posting fatwas on the internet saying women can't wear colors and we have to dress in black, this is all a lie. The Prophet's wives did not go around dressed in black. Okay, and, and, and in fact, they only wore black when they were grieving. You know, women can wear any color in the rainbow, and we can wear any type of jewelry, gold, silk, whatever. The prophet's wives dressed nicely. They wore gold. They wore jewelry. They wore makeup, all of that. Okay, so too much attention is focused on women in Islam, and the, the attention that's put on women is a bunch of lies. But let's get to the reality, the truth about men. Men cannot wear certain colors. Men cannot wear certain fabrics. And men cannot wear certain jewelry and certain metals. In fact, the Prophet wasalam, said any man who wears silk on earth will never wear it in the hereafter. And also he said any man who wears silk has no fortune in the hereafter. He said, gold and silks are forbidden to the men of my nation. They are allowed for the women only. So there it is. In your face. And also, every Muslim should know, Islam forbids men from wearing gold and silk, but it also forbids men and women from drinking or eating out of gold or silver utensils. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbade the companions to not only drink or eat out of gold or silver utensils, but also to even use them. Okay? Only if a person is suffering, uh, a man is suffering from an allergy and he can't wear anything but silk, that's the only time it becomes lawful for a man to wear silk. But other than that, men are forbidden from wearing silk and gold and women and men are forbidden from eating out of gold and silver utensils. So this is a big sin that so many of us do not take seriously today. And also another sin that is not taken seriously today is to kill and to not kill in the name of Allah. Okay, Islam allows us Muslims to eat the food of the people of the book. We can eat the, the meat of the Christians and Jews. The Christians and Jews do not have to mention Allah's name when they slaughter. That's not a fickle regulation for them. So I can go to McDonald's. I can go to Burger King. I can go to Wendy's. I can go to Friday's. I can go to any Christian-owned restaurant or Jewish-owned restaurant and eat their meat as long as it's not pork. They do not have to kill it in the name of Allah. But for us, it is part of our fickle regulation that when we slaughter, we have to mention Allah's names. Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation, the meaning, do not eat meat on which Allah's name has not been pronounced. He's talking about us as a fickle regulation. 
So if I'm going to go buy some meat from a Muslim owned meat store, that Muslim better have killed that meat in the name of Allah. Okay. And for those who do not slaughter, for those Muslims who do not mention Allah's name before they slaughter, they have the curse of Allah on them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah curses the one who does not kill in the name of Allah. So again, there's something that you meat store owners, you Muslim meat store owners and butchers need to remember, you have to mention Allah's name when you slaughter. The Jews and Christians don't have to, but we do. We can eat their food, whether they mention Allah's name or not, but we can't eat yours if you don't. Understand. And that brings us to another major sin, and this is the sin of changing the direction of the earth. In other words, changing the boundaries of the earth. You know how when you drive in a car, you will see the signs that say that you're on Route 62 West, or you're on Route 460, or this is north, this is south, this is east, this is west. Some people like to go around and change the signs. They'll dig the signs out of the hole that they're in and try to put, point it to a different direction. This is changing the lighthouse of the earth or changing the boundaries of the earth. This will confuse people, cause people to travel and get lost. This is a major sin in Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah curses the one who does not kill in his name and he also curses the one who changes the boundaries of the earth. The one who misleads the blind, the one who curses his parents, the one who indulges in homosexuality. So again, as you can see, a law, uh, the prophet said the law puts this sin of changing the boundaries of the earth in the same category as homosexuality, in the same category as uh, uh, cursing your parents. That shows how serious a sin it is. So don't do that. Do not do like some of these kids do. Some children like to go and do that. They'll take the sign that says north and south and change the direction to east and west to confuse the traveler. This is a horrific sin. Don't do that. And that brings us to the next sin for today, the sin of insulting the companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? Believe it or not, there's a lot of Muslims, you see them on social media, they badmouth Aisha, they badmouth Umar, they badmouth Abu Bakr, they speak badly about Muawiyah, they speak badly about Ibn, Ibn As. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah says, whoever attacks one of my friends, I will declare war on him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not insult my friends. By the one who has my soul, if one of you were to spend gold to equal the mountain of Uhud, you would not reach a part of what they have done. Again, this is why we have to be careful what we say about those companions. We don't get involved in their arguments, their disputes, because Allah has already chosen to forgive them for whatever bad choices they made in life because of their faith. So you don't get involved in that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever insults my companions, Allah curses him. So again, maybe this is why so many Muslims today, they have a hard time in life. You don't have a job. You can't keep a wife. You can't keep a, a decent home, a car. You're going around insulting the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a sin that brings about the curse of Allah. So again, avoid it. It goes back to what we talked about before. If you don't have anything nice to say about a person, then shut up. If you don't have so anything nice to say in general about anything, then just keep your mouth closed. There's exceptions, of course, but you're not an exception. Okay? If you don't have anything positive to say, then just shut up. Again, Allah defines the companions of the Prophet as being the vanguards of Islam. Allah says that they were the first who, they, who forsook their homes in the way of Allah. And Allah is pleased with them. 
So whoever insults them is angering and competing uh, in war with against the law. So again, guys, if you have nothing good to say, shut it up. And not only is it forbidden for us to insult the prophet's companions, but also the tribe of the Ansar, the Ansar Arabs. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as one of the signs of belief is to love the Ansar and to hate them is a sign of hypocrisy. The only ones who love them are people who truly believe in Allah. Anyone who hates them is nothing but a hypocrite. Why? Because the Ansar, these were the Arabs that took in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when no one else would. They pledged their allegiance to him when even his own family, the Quraysh, would not. They sacrificed, shared everything, their homes, even were willing to divorce their wives to allow them to marry them, you know, uh, for the sake of Allah. So anyone who speaks badly about the Ansar is a hypocrite and you stay away from them. And there's a lot of Muslims, especially on social media, who have nothing positive to say about the Ansar. And again, we have to be very, very careful with what we say out of our mouths, not only about other people, but about the religion of Islam too. We're living in the days where everybody wants to be a scholar. Everybody wants to be a person of knowledge. Everybody wants to be a daya. A few years ago, you know, didn't even know what a daya was. But everybody wants to be one now. Even though they're not qualified. A lot of people think that they can take a few classes, Islamic classes online, or go to some school and get a degree in Islam, and now they're a daya, and now they're a scholar, you know. But in reality, most of these people are nothing. Because until you understand the Sunnah, until you learn the Sunnah and understand it and implement it in your life, you're nothing. And you end up preaching about things that are not correct. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever preaches for error will bear the sin of all those who follow him. Whoever goes around teaching people things about the religion and the things you are teaching is wrong, you will get the punishment for all those who are stupid enough to follow you. Also, when we teach wrong things about Islam, you are changing the religion. You're innovating in the religion, and this is a major sin. So again, guys, be careful speaking about Islam if you are not qualified to speak about it. Answering questions, giving lectures about different tenets of our way of life that you are not even sure of. Because whoever is stupid enough to follow you and believe what you say, you're going to get the punishment for all of that. And that brings us to the last sin for today, which is another big one. People wearing fake hair, wearing false wigs, wigs, sewing extensions in your hair, wearing tat uh, tattoos also. Tattoos. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah curses the person who connects hair into your real hair and the one who's having it done. He also curses the person who makes the tattoo and the one who the tattoo is made on. He also curses the one who removes your eyebrows and the one who the eyebrows is being removed on. These are people who are changing the creation of Allah. And I gave a lecture before on what it means to change the creation of Allah. Go to my YouTube page or my SoundCloud SoundCloud page and Google and try to find it and understand what it means to change the creation of Allah. So we cannot wear extensions. That, that includes putting yarn. A lot of people put yarn in their hair to extend it, to make it long. That's still the same thing as fake hair. We can't do that. Arching our eyebrows. Okay, wearing tattoos. A lot of Muslims got tattoos on their bodies now. A tattoo of a rose or a horse or a butterfly. You know, we can't tattoo ourselves. 
Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cursed the person who is a tattoo maker and the one who the maker is doing. These are people who are imitating the creation of Allah. So guys, stay away from that. And so many of our Muslim youth are walking around with tattoos on their bodies, fake hair, arching their eyebrows and all of that. You're cursing yourself. And again, we wonder why bad things happen. Why come we can't get accepted into certain colleges? Why is it that you can't get a husband? You can't get married. Why is it that you know your life is so oppressive and you, you're so unhappy? Stop cursing yourself. Take the curse of Allah off of you. Stop wearing fake hair. Stop wearing tattoos and all of that. So these are the sins I want to go over today. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a quiz over these different sins and these different hadiths. We'll stop right here. If you have any questions or comments, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shalom la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika.